Welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today we are going to be using our contour lines. Hopefully you're not getting sick of them yet, but really this is a great, great way to learn to look at things. We are going to be drawing these daffodils um, that are blooming and I planted some last year and they are finally blooming and they remind me of Seattle, which I love. And so anyway, I thought that would be fun to draw them. And I'm also going to be using some watercolor today. You can use watercolor or not even color them in at all if you want. But we will be drawing them together. In the description below, I will have a link to the picture that I took of these so that you can be looking at the same picture that I am. Maybe I'll try to put it on the screen too. We'll see what I end up doing when I edit this, but that would be probably helpful for you. But um, this is pretty simple. Just all you need is something to draw with and a paper. If you wanna use watercolors, you could use watercolor paper watercolors and some kind of waterproof ink like a micron pen you know is my favorite something like that sharpies work great too and the nice thing with this and the reason i chose to do this is most of my flower tutorials we start in pencil we do a lot of erasing and this one we are just what you put down on that paper stays and that's a really good practice don't think it needs to look perfect um it, it doesn't this is a practice and also, it ends up kind of looking like a coloring book page. So anyway, you're kind of making your own coloring book page today, I guess. So let's get started. This time we are going to be drawing it using contour lines. So that's where, it's not a continuous contour line, but we're basically just drawing the outlines of the flowers. And it almost feels like a, like I want to say coloring book image, I guess, if you will. It's just basically these outer lines. Um, con cross contour lines would be the lines that's going across the surface of these flowers, but we're just going to be drawing these very outside lines. And I don't, my printer printed this so dark, so hopefully we can still use it. I'm going to just ignore the vase, the jar, I guess, but and just draw the flowers. So we've been drawing, we've been doing a lot of line drawings, and I thought it'd be fun to add a little color today. So we're going to be drawing it with a um, a pen or some kind of waterproof marker. This is a fine tip waterproof marker. A Pigma Micron pen and it's just a brown color. And yeah, I'm just gonna be using this. The nice thing with this technique is we are not going to erase anything. It's pretty quick. It doesn't need to look perfect. And uh, that's something to keep in mind. Let me just fold this because I'm gonna try to fit as much of this in the screen as I can. It doesn't need to look perfect. It's kind of a quick sketch and then we're just gonna paint um, the yellow in with our watercolors. So we haven't done anything really like this on Mr. Otter Studio, but you know, why use a coloring book when we can just make our own little doodles, even if they're not perfect. All right, so to make sure everything fits on here, I'm gonna start with this middle flower. Uh, that's just so that I can group everything and fit, fit it together. And I'm gonna start with this shape of this, this part of the, the middle of that daffodil. And I'm not gonna put it smack in the, maybe I'll put it right in the middle. I don't know. So we're just gonna draw these bumps around the circle, showing these little petals. I'm really trying to look at it more than what I think it looks like. There is a petal coming over it right here, but since we're gonna draw that next, I'm just gonna draw this area in here. All right, now I'm gonna draw this line right here that kind of separates the bottom of this tulip. And then I'm gonna draw this middle thing that's coming up and out of it. Just like these tiny little lines. I don't even know, like these straw kind of shapes. And then in the middle of them, there's like this bigger round shape. And I might, since we need to include some of these wrinkles in here, because I think they're important. I'm gonna just add some of the creases and the folds that are happening on the outside of the, these petals. Not all of them have them, but some of them do, and some of them even kind of overlap the other petals. And this is a really hard to draw kind of, I would prefer to do this from life. So if you could do it from life, that would be great. This is probably a little bit smaller, that's okay. All right, now I'm gonna start, there's one, two, three, four, there's five petals that we can see. I'm gonna start with this really skinny petal down over here. And there is a crease in the top of it. And then right next to it is this big full petal. And I call it a leaf, but it is a petal. And there's a flower here. So let's just move to this petal right here. 
Maybe I said leaf because it looks like a leaf. Now I'm going to draw the petal up here and then wait to draw this one until we have this flower in. So this one's coming up into the side right here. It's kind of nice actually to draw with a pen. After all of those pencil sketches and erasing so many of our lines, this actually feels really good to do this. Okay, now let's draw this shape of this daffodil right here, I'm, just since it's so big. And I'm gonna come to this side and draw it in as well. And then we just have this circle around the top where it's just like that tattered, almost looks like the bottom of a dress. And again, I'm really trying to look at this flower more than I'm looking at my paper. So I hope you do the same. Again, this image, you can find it on my website, mrrotterstudio.com. I'll put a link in the description below just so you can see it. And then we can just see, I can't, this picture is so terrible. I really can't see much inside of this, but definitely some of these petals are overlapping and wrinkling in. And then we have these bottom petals. It's like a teacup on a platter. Now this one is really big, wide, I guess. Not long, but wide. So it comes about to here. Sometimes if I'm doing a contour line drawing, I'll just kind of like look at the space first and figure out how far that thing comes out. And then this petal comes up and down. And there's actually one behind it. And then there's one that kind of points down right here and almost touches that petal. And then there's this big one that's coming out to the side here. And there is another one back behind there. All right, now let's just put this petal in from this flower over. And again, hopefully you have this image and you're drawing it with me instead of just trying to copy my drawing, because a drawing from a drawing, I don't know, is not the best thing. So try to print this picture or pull it up on your computer screen or like on, yeah, and maybe just put it, if you're using your computer, maybe you could just put like a small picture here, you know, like have this somewhere. So I know not everybody can print it out, but I just want you to have access to this image. So I would be so sad if, if you're just, yeah, drawing from my drawing is kind of hard. I just kind of wanted you to see this process because um, I would like you to draw something, some kind of plant that you like. And daffodils just kind of remind me of Seattle right now and traveling and, you know, those things that I can't really do right now. Okay, so I'm just going to draw. I'm drawing this kind of cone shape right here. This is kind of the nice thing about learning about shapes first is you can kind of find those shapes in what you're drawing and it helps. This would be a really fun... Um, painting to do. Okay, and then draw the circle shape around the top, but really look at those petals and what they're doing. These ones, it's probably just because of the shadow, but there's a lot of texture in here. Okay, now these petals, let's go ahead and draw this one that's coming into this petal. And since it is coming in front of it, but I'm gonna kinda of draw it a little bit behind. And then this one that's coming straight up, I'm gonna draw the shape of it, but then there, it's curving this way. So we can see this side of the petal. And then there's this other petal that's coming up here. And actually, it's curving around itself. And we have probably the biggest petal that we can see is this one that's coming down. And there's actually one that overlaps it, but I just want to put this little wrinkle in first. And this one's kind of coming out from here, going back and then back inside. And you can add, you can see like a little, some stems and stuff in here, but I'm just I just want to paint these daffodils in. I don't want to focus too much on those details. So make sure if there's any lines that I missed, go ahead and draw them in. 
like on some of these petals, I can just see a little bit of some, some folds and some creases. This one definitely has a big fold in it here. I mean, you don't need to put them on every petal, just kind of what you see. All right, so that is what it looks like when you do a contour line drawing of some lilies, at least the ones that I have. And I, you can leave it like this, or you can add color. I'm just gonna add some bright yellow to this. It's just such a cheerful color. <laughs> so if you wanna paint these with me, go ahead and grab your watercolors. And remember, I'm setting up on the right side, but if you're left-handed, you wanna set up on the left side. Get your watercolors, your water, maybe a paper towel. I shouldn't have left my paintbrush in there and a paintbrush. I'm probably just gonna be using this smaller brush just because I have these little details in there. And mix up a puddle of yellow so we have enough to cover this entire flower with. And there are some parts on these petals where it almost looks green and I'm sure it's my picture, but I might add maybe just some green to the petals before they dry. You can add some shading if you want or you can just paint them one solid color yellow. It's totally up to you. You can use a water dropper if this is like kind of tedious for you to <laughs> mix up your colors this way. I just thought it would be good to draw something using contour lines together. And you know, maybe I can even put this image in the, I'll try to just add it to the video. Maybe that would be helpful for you. I'm just gonna mix up kind of like a, whoa, that orange was ready for action. <laughs> kind of took over. I'm just gonna have like some darker colors in here that I can just kind of drop in. Okay, so we're painting from light to dark. I'm gonna go flower by flower. I'm just gonna start on the left side since I'm right-handed, I don't wanna like smear across these ones, but if you're left-handed, go ahead and start on this side. Whoops, that's the wrong yellow. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear some Zelda in the background. Forgot to shut the door. Okay, and if you wanna add some shadows that kind of bleed um, into some colors, you wanna do it while it's still wet. So like if I wanna add this different kind of orangey yellow color, maybe I do, I don't know. I need to look at the picture. Then maybe I'll add it like under here. Just kind of let that bleed out and maybe just like a tiny bit in there. then I'm just going to start painting this next one. And maybe you can't get outside right now, but if you can, what I think would be really good is after this, if you went and painted drew some drawings of things that you can see outside. And if you can't get outside, um, maybe you can look on your computer and find pictures of things that you like or animals that you like. I think animals are really, really fun to draw this way. I think drawing with a pen is just a really good thing to do if you're kind of struggling because, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's see, oh, we totally forgot a petal in here. That's okay. I actually can't see it in my drawing. Maybe it got picked off by one of my kids, I don't know. Okay, so this one I've kind of added a little bit of a, like an orangey color to it, and so I might just add a little bit of that in here. I don't want bubbles though. Okay, and now I'm gonna start painting this very last one. If you get these big puddles, just try to pull them across your painting. I mean, 
this part, <laughs> I don't know if you even really need to see me do this. We're just painting it in with yellow, but if you want, I mean, hopefully you're painting right now, but I think sometimes watching somebody do it and then watching somebody do it and then doing it yourself, it can be really helpful too. So you can watch me paint and then paint yours, or you might just watch me once and then kind of figure out how to do it on your own. Just gonna add a little bit of this orangey color again to this one. I might just leave them like this. I'll zoom in so you can kind of see. This is, it's pretty flat color, which I think is fine. If you did want to darken it up and add some shadows, I'm just gonna show you how to do that really quick. You can take the same exact color over it or you can add like a little bit of orange, whatever um, you want. I'm just gonna use this solid yellow color and you can just place it over those areas that were a little bit darker. And then if you don't want to have those harsh lines, you might like it just like this. And actually it kind of is a little bit harsh like that. But if you don't want your lines like that, then you just, let me just scoot this over, rinse your brush off, blot it off. And then while this is still wet, you can just soften up those lines. If you want it to have that look. Also, um, like right here, there is definitely a shadow under the top of this, so I'll kind of show you how to put that in. So you just, I'm just taking solid yellow. Blotting my brush off, and again, you don't need to soften it up. You could keep it a hard line if you wanted. Let me kind of dry that up. Okay, so that just adds a little bit more of like some dimension to this. And then actually, instead of this being shaded, it's actually this that's really shaded over here. So you might like that. If you do, just keep it again. And if you don't, just soften up those edges. So I would recommend paint, trying some different things painting using this style, just so you can kind of like, um, try to not be so rigid in your painting, because this kind of forces you to just kind of let go of mistakes. Because <laughs> you're drawing it with a pen, which makes it kind of hard to erase things. I'm just gonna leave the hard area right there, but then I am going to add shading inside of this petal. So you can follow along with me and do some of these, or you can kind of figure out your own shadows and things like that. I mean, I'm just showing, I'm trying to show you just like an example so you can do it on your own. This is kind of like our practice. And then I'm going to tell you what I want your assignment to be, which is a little bit different. Maybe I already told you, I don't, I don't know what I've even said. Just adding some more shadows to some of these petals. And I do like how these look like with the hard lines. Just since I smoothed some of those out, I might smooth some of these. I'm going to just look at these petals. This one's in the shadows, so. Okay, it sounds like my baby's up from her nap, so. I need to stop painting, <laughs> go check on her. <laughs> All right, so there you go. That's just an example of one thing you can do. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for you. I would definitely, if I had time, you know, I might add some just indications of texture on the top of these petals, whatever. 
Okay, thank you so much for sticking that out with me. Uh, I hope it turned out and that you had fun drawing these flowers. Uh, I did. And I love daffodils and I love springtime with all of these blooms. Even though I'm kind of stuck inside, it's still nice to have flowers and some color. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you next time on Mr. Otter's Studio.